Waldo Emerson would love this episode. Nothing like a fine walk in the woods. I, I always think of like, uh, when I think of primeval forests, I always think of like darkness. And then there's like these like cool ruins, oh, you yeah. know, symbols that are made out of like twigs. But if there were, if there were ruins in it, human ruins is not primeval. Because at that mm. point, then humans have interacted with that forest mm. and actually altered its structure. So the idea of this primeval forest is what does a forest look like without the intervention or the interaction of the human element? And so to look at that forest complexity, researchers are using lasers to generate data to re-render 3D models of the forest and then analyze that complexity of data to say, oh, here's the difference between a forest and a specific area. Um as opposed to one that maybe gets more or less rainfall and what is the effect of climate change because of a human, you know, because of humans right. affecting the growth and structure of that forest itself. Yeah. And, and they talk about in this article in the very beginning, what the importance for biodiversity is mm -hmm. and it's mainly global carbon and water cycling. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's important, right? So that water cycling. So the amount of precipitation that actually comes down and hits that forest is they see a strong correlation in the data with the crowns of the trees and their heights and the structures of those trees underneath those crowns yeah, are much more varying and complex. Yeah. Cause we always look at a forest as like habitats for different types of species. And, mm -hmm. you know, we look at it that way instead of like, they talk about the influences process of gas and energy exchange within the atmosphere. Well, yeah, because if you have a higher complexity, you know, more canopies, more things doing that process of photosynthesis and uh, that carbon dioxide exchange, you want that. So if we as human beings are, you know, interrupting the natural equilibrium of the climate here on Earth, and we're decreasing the amount of precipitation on these primeval forests, which manage a huge amount of that carbon dioxide exchange for us, that's a problem. Because if we decrease the complexity or in essentially the... Um, the strength of the structure of that forest, that's going to be more debilitating for us and not only increase the negative effects of climate change that mm. would be happening here on the earth. So the cool part about this is by using these, la these lasers to render these forests in 3D and see how that structure, that complex structure is directly affecting that sort of exchange and you know, keeping a health for the species and the atmosphere itself. That's something that needs to be studied. And if water's a key driver, well, then we need to make sure that, you know, these places in areas that are in threat of receiving that rainfall that's required. I mean, that's a direct, that's a, I don't want to call it indirect, but it's, it's more of like a direct consequence of the bad choices we are making that are crippling a primeval forest that you don't even touch. You don't even walk through. Yeah. And, and they were talking about the places they went. And I thought this was really cool. Um, to achieve this, they spent two years traveling to remote primeval forest areas around the world to record the structure of the forest with the help. We talked about this 3D laser scanners. Mm -hmm. So much like a th uh, like a 3D laser printer. That's so cool. You know, like and it's just, just scanning, scanning the whole environment. Do you remember Predator? How we scan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that cool. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, like I remember that. that. Yeah, this allows important metrics to be calculated to describe the structure. They found that the global variability of forest structures can be explained to a large extent by the amount of precip precipitation. And that's by the availability of water in the different ecosystems. Right. Higher the water, higher the complexity. Based on these findings, and with the help of climate data, mm -hmm. this is intrigues us at Tartle. Yep. We're able to create maps of the world's forests showing the global variability of structural complexity. Which is cool. So not only do they have satellite mapping that they're taking for the changes and the variability, but they're also going into those forests and looking at those structures firsthand. Yeah, and, and so th they said that there's only 30% of the forests in the world that are primeval. Uh, primeval. Yeah. And so long-term goal of this research, which I love, uh, is to better understand how human influence and climate change is affecting the forest. So you have two data points. Yeah. You have, okay, what happens when we, we're looking at 30% and then we can judge the 70% off the 30% by getting first party data. Yeah. And that's what they're, they're going into the woods. Yeah. They, they're actually going there, seeing something that's untouched, mm -hmm. that's natural in its, in its perfect, pristine environment. And they're not taking like this big third party view from a satellite. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're using that observational data plus the first hand data from the forest. And then they're making that they're not creating a bias. 
No, because they, they have a pure data coming from a forest that's been untouched. The only thing that can touch it would be climate change. Yes. You know, but other than that, you know, humans are, there may be a few humans walking in there, but other than that, it's not. They're not like getting logged and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, commercial space. And then from there, you can take that, make that the reference point, and then start looking at, oh, okay, well, what is, you know, like where I'm from, Washington State, you know, with tons of logging practices, now they can take the Pacific Northwest, you know, which a lot of people don't realize, the little horn on Washington State, they lose planes in there and never find them. Yeah. So the Olympic Peninsula, it's, it's crazy. It's packed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, the whole part is there's no one lives there. Precipitous rainfall there all the time. Yeah, you have a rainforest up there, the whole rainforest. People don't even realize, even a lot of Alaska's rainforest. Yeah, yeah. People don't realize Hello. that. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, messing with that Not ecosystem. Not just the Amazon. Could you imagine messing with that rainforest in Washington State? I mean, luckily, no. it's, um, it's, it's, it's very wild and cool. But uh, so particular focus here is the question of how changes in uh, precipitation patterns due to climate change after affect the structure of the forest yeah so which i think is really cool because now with the 3d you can see um the variability of structures yeah it decreases and you weaken the structure the importance of water for the formation of complex forest structures can be explained by various interacting mechanisms so this is cool the availability of water is an important driver of the diversity of tree species of course because there's just like a straw yeah so that's why it's picture like sucking up water yeah the more tree species a forest holds the more pronounced is the coexistence of different crown shapes and sizes of trees, which you talked about. Mm -hmm. This means that the space available for the crown trees can often be utilized more efficiently in species rich forests, which makes the forest structure more complex. So the more variety of trees you have, yes. Um, the more variety of brush and the layers that you have of that, you know, that's what makes a rainforest so beautiful. You know, you can go from a hundred feet in the air all the way. And then there's like, there's even in each of those little layers, there's even different types of creatures that live and stay in that realm. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's diversity of life. I'd be bummed out just seeing, you know, imagine if we were stuck on over just one tree. Yes. Yeah, just exactly. one damn type of tree. What if it was just like a coconut palm? Right. I'd be like, I can't stare at that all day long. Yeah. And they said forests with high structural complexity can also be found in temperate zones. Um, and that's what they're talking about. The high rainfall in the Pacific mm -hmm. Northwest, coastal forests of Chile, um, the results of the study are an important starting point for further work. And I love this because this well, is this like, is foundational. Yes. We talk about this all the time is that first party data allows for a proper foundation to really kick your research off. Yeah. And, and so not, so what they're saying is they're saying as we get more money for this study, not only can we go into the forest and study this, but then we'll be able to use satellite 3d imaging and look at it from that too. And then see the, see yeah. the disparities. That's like turtle. You know, you have, people integrating their API calls, right? Like with their Fitbit and everything, all this other stuff, third party. And then they do their first party stuff where you come and you, you know, learn from them directly. You marry both of those data sets together. Now you have something very important in, you know, beyond that as a metaphor, what should be really focused on here is the fact that it doesn't matter where you are on the globe, you have an effect on these forests yes. and there's not much left of them. Right. But they're very important to that oxygen exchange, that carbon dioxide and oxygen exchange. We need that. Yeah, and, and shout out to everyone that's doing forest management. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know here in the United States, uh, you have, because uh, I've seen that in Washington State, and, you know, I know there's different political views and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, we know we have a climate stability problem. Mm -hmm. And how can we as humans, even if we're going in there and logging because we need wood and stuff like that, but how can we uh, create stability with us interacting with nature? That's a great question. And listen, you know, Decre if we can decrease that carbon footprint, mm -hmm. okay, from all that stuff we're consuming, well, you don't have to physically go out and plant a tree. You can allow it to regrow itself. Leave it alone, right? Let it move back into le equilibrium. But we're just knocking it out of equilibrium right now. Yeah, constantly. It's just for our, uh, it's just service to ourselves. Yeah. Constantly. And, so then, if, and then we're taking from the environment and never giving back. Right. So if you want to start fixing these things, share data, earn money, change the world. How do we do that? You go to turtle.co, you sign up, and then once you do that, you start populating that data, your thoughts, you know, linking up all those systems that you use. And then from that, share the data, earn your money, change your world. What What if I want to not earn my money and I want to give to climate stability? Great. Share data, earn money, donate that money, <laughs> change your world. All those things can be done on Turtle. Turtle.co.